So let's go ahead and let's take a look at molecular polarity. Um, so basically, uh, molecular polarity is going to be dictated by um, basically dipole moments that occur between bonds in the molecule, um, as well as the overall shape and orientation of those bonds within the molecule. Okay, so just a quick review of dipole moments. Um, so basically, if we have, for instance, HCl in this case, um, basically we look at the differences in electronegativity between the atoms. Okay, so we have hydrogen and we have chlorine, they're bonded together. Chlorine is the more electronegative element, so it has more electron density and subsequently a partially negative charge um, on its um, structure. Okay, um, while the hydrogen is less electronegative um, and has less electron density and subsequently has a partial positive charge. Okay, so this uh, difference in electronegativity creates a dipole moment, and we represent that dipole moment by this arrow. Okay, the positive end of the arrow is going to be in the partially positive end of the molecule, and the tip of the arrow is going to point towards the partially negative portion of the molecule. Okay, so um, the dipole moment obviously is going to be dictated within a linear molecule based on whichever one's more electronegative. Now, we do have to consider now that when we get into more complicated molecules, uh, that electronegativity differences could be canceled out, or those dipole moments could be canceled out based on symmetry and things of that sort. So we're going to take a look at that. So in a nonpolar molecule, um, all of the dipole moments are going to be symmetrical and cancel each other out. So, okay, this is assuming that a dipole moment exists. If no dipole moments exist, then obviously you still have a nonpolar molecule. But if you do have dipole moments and the molecule itself is symmetrical, um, basically those dipole moments will cancel each other out and you end up with a nonpolar molecule. So um, in this situation, if we look at BF3, it has a trigonal um, planar shape um, and all of the bonds um, are all equivalent. Um, they're all equidistant from each other and basically there's a high level of symmetry in this molecule. Um, so basically in this case, even though you have dipole moments within the individual bonds, um, the overall symmetry of the molecule cancels them out and gives you overall a nonpolar molecule. If we go ahead and look at polar molecules, um, in the situation of a polar molecule, uh, you don't have uh, basically symmetry that allows the dipoles to be canceled out. So in this case, um, H2O is an example. Um, we know that H2O has um, a pair of lone pairs on its central atom as well as two hydrogens um, bonded to it, to that oxygen. Okay, um, so hydrogen is less electronegative, so oxygen is going to be, or is going to be the more electronegative element, and so um, your dipole moments within the bonds individually are going to be pointing towards the oxygen. Okay, so this coupled with the lone pair present gives us an overall dipole moment in this direction of the molecule. Okay, so around this area of the molecule, you're going to have that partial um, negative, and around this area of the molecule, you're going to have partial positive moments. Okay, so you have a polar molecule in this situation because you have dipole moments and you have um, a lack of symmetry in the molecule. So what's an easy way for us to determine if we have a polar molecule? Okay, well, we're going to look at that. The easiest way, in my opinion, to figure out if you have a polar or nonpolar molecule um, is to look at the types of atoms that you have bonded to the central atom as well as if you have lone pairs or not. Okay, so... If you have dipole moments within the bonds, but you have an atom with a set of lone pairs, okay, you are going to have a polar molecule. So in the situation where we looked at oxygen, okay, we have the exact same types of atoms bonded to the central atom. However, right, we have a lone pair um, set. So in this situation, we have a polar molecule um, because of the lone pairs and the lack of symmetry um, due to not having uh, two other hydrogens bonded to that oxygen. Okay, um, asymmetrical atoms is also going to be another um, important way to figure out if you have a nonpolar or polar molecule. So um, if you have a central atom that has all of its atoms bonded, okay, so it has all bonding pairs and all of them are the same, you're going to end up with a nonpolar molecule. However, when you have a central atom that's bonded to different elements okay, that have dipole moments, you're going to end up with an asymmetrical stru structure, so you're subsequently going to get a dipole moment for that molecule. Okay, so 
Obviously, you need a dipole moment to be present in order to have a polar molecule. Okay, so those bonds have to have a difference in electronegativity that's significant enough to create a dipole. If you have that, then you're going to look at the central atom. If the central atom has all the same elements bonded to it, okay, then you will have a nonpolar molecule. If you have a different uh, set of atoms, so you know maybe three of the same and one that's different, you will have a nonpolar molecule because it lacks symmetry. Okay. In that same way, if you have dipole moments within your bonds, but you have a lone pair on the central atom, you know 99% of the time you're going to have a non, excuse me, a polar molecule.